In this video, I'll solve question 6 of the Cayley Olympiad paper from 2022. The Cayley Olympiad is sat by students who've done really well in the UKMT's Intermediate Maths Challenge. It's aimed at students in Year 9 in England and Wales, or students ages 13 to 14 if you're comparing with other parts of the world. Depending which year group students are in and how well they've done, they might progress to either the Kangaroo rounds or the Olympiad rounds, can be the Grey or the Pink Kangaroo, or the Cayley McLaurin or Hamilton rounds, depending uh, what year group they're in. These are some of the most challenging problems for students of this age group, and unlike the uh, intermediate math challenge and the kangaroo rounds, the Olympiad rounds do require students to give full working in their answers. So this question would be worth uh, 10 marks uh, in the Olympiad round. The best way to practice for these competitions is to head over to courses.mathsaurus.com where you can try one of my free preparation courses. So you can work through this question and all the others in this paper with video hints as well as solutions. And there are also courses for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, for the Kangaroo, for the Junior and Senior Rounds and loads more over there as well. So do head over there, totally free to sign up, no payment details are required to access these free courses with the UKMT questions. So I hope to see you over there at some point, but for now let's get on with this question right here on YouTube. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So question six, Seth has nine stones, three painted blue, three red and three yellow, and uh, each of them are labelled one, two, three um, as well. So uh, I'm going to just use the notation, very obviously, B1, B2, B3, uh, Y1, Y2 and Y3, and R1, R2 and R3 to refer to those nine stones, blue, one, two and three, yellow, one, two and three, and red, one, two and three. And he's going to build a vertical tower okay, with three um, of these blocks, one on top of the other. We've got to follow these rules. So they're going to form a set if one of these four conditions hold, and we want to avoid creating a set. right? So we want all of these conditions to be false. So all have the same color, all have the same number, all have different colors all label with different numbers, so none of these can be true. Now, uh, let's just think about the colour statements together. So we can't have them all the same colour, and we can't have them uh, all different colours, right? So uh, 1 and 3 actually combine, basically, to say that we must have uh, 2 of 1 colour, right? Um, 2 of 1 colour and 1 of another, right? Otherwise, I'm going to have three of the same colour, or they're all going to be different colours. And the same with two and four. Okay, there's actually some sort of symmetry in this problem. Um, and, and this says that, well, we can't have uh, all the same number, but we also can't have all different numbers. So we must have two of one number and one of another. Now, there are lots of different ways you can go about this problem. And I have said in another question earlier on in this paper that like at what point you go for brute force uh, is a bit of an art and you could narrow this down quite far or you could sort of get to a point where you recognize there might be quite a lot of possibilities but not loads of possibilities now um i'm going to employ a technique here that's very powerful in combinatorics and i'm going to then just brute force quite a lot of cases because I think it's a, an efficient way of doing this problem and it's the way I went about it. Although there are ways I'm sure of uh, you know, getting more about symmetries in this problem. So I'm just gonna suppose that the top block is B1, right? So I'm gonna say, suppose the top block is B1. Now, the nice thing about the symmetry in this problem is it doesn't really matter which one I put at the top they're all equal, essentially. So the number of ways there are to, to find a tower that avoids a set here with B1 at the top, right, is just one ninth of the total number of ways, because I could put B2 or B3 at the top and I'd get the same total number. I could put any of them at the top and, and I would get the same number that go with them, right? And now let's just think about the possibilities for um, the others, right? And actually, I think I can solve this with a sort of a table quite efficiently, right? If I put B2 next, then uh, on the bottom, I can't have another blue one, so I can only have a yellow, right? And uh, I could have yellow one, and I could have yellow two, but I can't have yellow three, because that would make all of the numbers uh, different. Or I could also have red one or uh, red two, 
Okay, so this gives me uh, sort of four options. Now, you might start to worry, well, there's a lot to do here, but it's an Olympiad question, right? I mean, you know, six of these in uh, two hours, you've got 20 minutes to do each question if you're getting full marks here. And let's face it, most people don't get anywhere near full marks. So you can afford to spend a bit of time doing this and it's not going to take you that long. There's only eight things to consider here, right? So I can do blue three and I've got a kind of symmetry here. Right? Again, I can, I can do a yellow one or yellow three or I could do red one or red three with it, um, and, uh, and and that's it, right? So um, now let's think about what happens when I do yellow one, okay? Well, uh, I can't have another one, um, and I can't have a red. So I've either got to do a blue two with it, or blue three, or I could have yellow two, or I could have a yellow three, okay? Uh, now with yellow two, right, um, I've got to have another blue or another yellow, right, so I could have, now I can't have blue three, but I could have blue two, uh, and I've already used blue one, um, and I can't have yellow three, because that would make one, two, three, but I could have yellow one. So there are my possibilities for the bottom one. Uh, with yellow three, um, kind of similar here now, I've got to have um, another blue uh, or yellow. Um, I've used blue one already. Blue two wouldn't work because it would give me one, two, three. So I'll have that. I'll have blue three as a possibility. And yellow um, one is the other possibility for the same reason here. And now I've got a kind of symmetry as well that I can exploit, right? So I can actually do this now uh, quite quickly because red and yellow are sort of the same, right? So you could actually just say, well, um, you know, you could, you could just say, well, I've got the same number uh, for each of these if you want to, uh, but I'm just going to write this out for completeness here. Red 1, red 2 and red 3. So red 1 is also going to allow us to have blue 2 and blue 3 with red 2 and red 3. And I can write that down uh, as options as well. I can write that down very quickly here um, because it's just the same as the yellow 1 case, right? And so red 2 uh, case is going to have blue 2 and red 1 as possibilities and red 3 is going to have blue 3 and red 1 as possibilities. When I add these together, I've got 4, 4, 4, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 24. Um, right, so we get uh, 24 possibilities. Uh, with uh, B1 at the top. And so by that symmetric uh, argument that I talked about at the start, the total number uh, is just 9 times 24 because you know if I put b2 here instead okay I'd have different combinations here but it's all the same up to renumbering recoloring right like uh, if I start with a particular one here it's going to restrict the others in exactly the same way there was nothing special about b1 right the problem is totally symmetric in the colors and the numbers um, and uh, 9 times 24 gives us 216 uh, 6 cubed and uh, that's the final answer to this question. So I think that's a really efficient way of doing this, actually, even though you might say, oh, it's a bit ugly because it requires this brute force bit. But in the amount of time we've got available, this is a very reasonable amount of time to spend considering cases. I think this is very efficient and perhaps easier than the way that is done in the official solutions. Another excellent method. Um, there if you want to have a look at it. Um, but there we go. Well done if you got that right, however you did it. Um, and good luck with any challenges that you're taking in the future.